This video is kind of the living embodiment of, but why? As I attempt to cram three different GPUs from three different chip makers into one PC. So why? Because it works. A few years ago, I made this video talking about how with the introduction of DirectX 12, AMD and Nvidia cards could now work together using something called explicit multi GPU. This was DX12's way of implementing split frame rendering, which had existed prior, but hadn't yet been seen in games, at least to my knowledge. The video that I did back in 2016 dives into a little more detail about this, but basically, DX12 was going to allow shared memory pools between graphics cards, so even GPUs not connected over an SLI bridge could work together to render different pieces of the same frame. This could theoretically speed up the render process and give you better performance in multi-GPU setups, even if the GPUs were of a different generation, brand, or silicon type. This didn't work. Well, maybe that's simplifying things a bit too much. It actually did work, but as it was up to game devs to flip the switch to allow this functionality in their titles, it never really caught on. There were a few games that were released where you could notably see a difference, but they were few and far between. And soon after we saw the rapid decline in multi-GPU setups anyway. But does that mean that there is no actual use case anymore for having more than one graphics card? Absolutely not. And since we now have three players in the game with Intel joining AMD and Nvidia, I wanted to see if I could get them all set up and working together in glorious harmony. But there were some hurdles to clear first. The first problem I faced was PCIe slot spacing. Most modern motherboards are now eschewing the traditional three or four PCIe slot configuration in favor of two. This is for a number of reasons, primarily because A, GPUs are getting enormous and could overlap the extra slots anyway, and B, again, nobody does SLI or Crossfire anymore. There are some modern boards where three or four slots is still a thing, and I luckily was able to use an Asus Strix X670E for my purposes here. The second problem was choosing which GPUs would actually fit on this board without using an octopus of riser cables. So I had to be quite conscious of girth. The Intel card was actually easy, as the A770 is a slim and trim two slots and will work anywhere in this config. Seeing as the spacing between the middle and bottom slots was exactly two, this is where Intel would have to live. The top card had to be limited to three slots maximum and preferably 2.5 or less, so I chose to pop in an AMD 6800 XT. It's got a little extra fluffiness going on here in the middle, but it fits above the Intel card. The bottom slot had the luxury of having an unlimited slot allocation as I was using an open air bench for this. And the bottom of the bench had no lower bounds. This allowed me to use an ASUS TUF RTX 4070 Ti. If you were attempting to do this in a case, you might have some issues with this lower area, unless you have extra room between the bottom of your motherboard and the bottom of the case. The third problem was power. This wasn't gonna be an efficient system no matter how I sliced it, and if I managed to fully load all the GPUs at once, I could easily pull over a thousand watts from the wall. Not to mention that I needed quite a few PCIe power cables to plug in all of our hardware. The EVGA 1600T2 is the answer, and I was able to run everything off of one power supply. Once I got everything set up and plugged in, actually installing the relevant software was pretty much as simple as could be. The Intel, AMD, and Nvidia drivers all installed without any hitches and recognized their respective cards right away. The way the system was seeing the GPUs and the way they will be arranged in the overlay was the 6800 XT as card one, the 4070 Ti as card two, and the A770 as card three. So when I show capture footage showing utilization, AMD will be at the top, Nvidia in the middle, and Intel at the bottom. The first thing that I thought would be an actual real world use case for this kind of setup would be to put the cards to work doing different tasks. OBS is a fantastic use case for this, as with the introduction of the AV1 encoder as an option, there are now a lot of different ways to capture footage. In the setup menu, you can choose which GPU will be leveraged for capture and under which codec. 
I set up OBS to capture using the Intel A770 and the H.264 codec. In single GPU setups, if you want to capture gameplay footage using OBS, there will inevitably be some significant overhead, and your gameplay might suffer as a result because the GPU is trying to do two things at once. Here, as we have an abundance of available computing horsepower to take advantage of, we can assign the A770 to be our encoding workhorse, while the other two get to stretch their legs doing other things. So any capture footage that you see from here on out will be done using this config. Now, as I alluded to earlier, using this kind of setup solely for games might not be the best of ideas. I ran through almost 20 games that run on DX12 to see if I could get any of them to recognize and utilize more than one of our three GPUs, and I only found two that did. The first one was actually a known quantity for me in this kind of test, and that was Ashes of the Singularity. While this isn't exactly a popular title with an average player base of about 50 people at any given time, it does qualify as a game, and it does utilize two of our three graphics cards to full effect. I saw both high core use and high memory allocation throughout testing Ashes, and it ran really smoothly. The only other game that seemed to sort of work was Quake 2 RTX. There's a menu option under graphics where you can enable multi-GPU configurations. And while I'm sure that this was meant to work primarily with SLI setups, it also does work here to an extent. I'm sorry that the top of this footage was cut off for some reason, but while the primary load in Quake is on the 4070 Ti due to its ray tracing capabilities, the AMD card was also seeing some use usually hovering between 15 and 24%, but going as high as 34% at times. Everything else I tried was just kind of a dud. I even thought that maybe some of my Vulkan titles would have some hidden explicit multi-GPU functionality built in, but alas, that was not to be. But what about professional applications like Adobe Premiere? I loaded up a timeline from a recent project along with System Monitor to see if our graphics cards would see any load on them from timeline scrubbing or video exporting. Timeline scrubbing actually did use both the 4070 Ti and the 6800 XT. As you do have the option to choose your primary engine here, CUDA is the obvious answer, and as such, the 4070 Ti was primary. It saw heavy load while moving the playhead side to side, but I did also notice that the 6800 XT was also being used as the load ramped up to about 18%. Although I had high hopes for Media Encoder, as it turns out, the video exports did not see any benefit from having more than one card, and the 6800 XT stayed at essentially no load. But what about another video editing platform that is gaining popularity? Let's check out DaVinci Resolve, a piece of software that I have never really gotten to know all that well. Resolve actually is known for being able to better utilize multiple video card setups, but it doesn't do it by default. If you dive into the settings menu, you can actually see that by unchecking the box for auto under GPU selection, you can pick any and all of your available hardware to be enabled during resolve use. This is actually really awesome and probably the best use case for this kind of a ridiculous setup that we've found so far. Although full disclosure, as I don't own the $300 license for the studio version of Resolve, I wasn't able to test this feature as it is locked behind a paywall. Another interesting thing that you can do if you happen to be crazy like me and want to test this out is to go into the Windows Graphics Settings menu, which will show you a full list of 3D enabled titles and applications that you have currently installed. For each one, you can click on Options and then the radio button for specific GPU. This will allow you to tell your system that when you load up Cyberpunk, you want the NVIDIA graphics card to run it, but when you play Assassin's Creed, you'd prefer to use the AMD card as it happens to be faster in this game. So overall, this was a fun thought experiment that I can say was at least a moderate success. I was able to get an Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA graphics card working simultaneously in one system without resorting to multiple power supplies or riser cables. All of the respective control software installed and functioned correctly. We found use cases for having a setup like this, and I had a bit of fun playing around with a goofy hardware configuration in the name of science. So I hope you also had some fun with this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.